I want to start with a truth that looks back at 1999, when this organization was founded, when it first started. 1999 was a very different time. Everyone here is like over 20, right? I just want to make sure there's no like Gen Zs in the room. 99, do you think about where you were, think about what you were doing for work, where you lived, right? It was, it was a fascinating different time. This was an iPhone app in 1999, right? This was the, the best game. I was awesome at this game, by the way, like so good. You made a phone call on an actual phone. Weird, I know. You saved files on one of these, not Dropbox, no Google file sharing, right? This was Wikipedia. Who used Encarta, Microsoft Encarta? Who misses it? Nobody, nobody, right? This was Netflix. I had many late fees from, that, from Blockbuster. And Google was just one year old. It still had the exclamation point. In fact, it was still in beta, not to make anyone feel old, but a lot has happened in 20 years. The way you got to Google was from these CDs that they would send, right? How many of you kept all of these thinking, I'm going to use all of these someday, and then never ended up using them, right? They stacked up. Google Maps was a series of paper that was littering your car floor, right? And this was Instagram in 99. Some poor person at CVS had to look at all your weird party photos as they developed them. Not judging, but that's a cool job. Y2K was like the biggest cybersecurity thing that was going to ruin the world. Remember how big of a deal this was and then wasn't? And I'm from Boston, and so who here is a Boston Red Sox affiliate? You might live somewhere else, but you're a fan. Yay. We like to win, so I know. We're like, oh, it's me. Be proud, OK? We're getting used to it at this point. The curse of the Bambino still hadn't been broken. This is when we traded Babe Ruth to the Yankees, and then we didn't win the World Series for like 9,000 years. In 99, it still wasn't broken. Now, 2019, 20 years later, it looks very different. It looks very different from a just regular walking down the street perspective, how we live our life perspective. But in marketing and in selling, it looks way different because we are marketing in a time of information overload. This, to me, is the year, an inflection point of information overload. Give you some examples. The typical American hears or reads 100,000 words every single day. Every day, 100,000 words. We take in five times as much information each day than we did in 1986. Then in the year of Boy George, Mr. T, which is like the coolest party that I wasn't invited to, Steve Wozniak, five times as much information on a daily basis is being consumed by us and our buyers. We're exposed to as much information in one day as somebody in their 15th century would be in their entire lifetime. Their entire lifetime, and we beat it with one day full of the information that we're consuming. I like this image because this is like tweeting in the 15th century, the guy on the right with the bird. If you work in an office, which meant many people that you are selling to do use email, white collar workers, they receive on average 121 emails a day. Does that seem low to anybody? I get more than 121. Who has multiple email addresses? We get more than 121, but this is the average number of emails that an office worker receiving business email receives. Adobe did a study and they found out that the number one most hated email phrase ever was this. <laughs> Not sure if you saw my last email, right? The passive aggressive, like, hey, I need something, stop it. You know, it's rude. But it's, it's, if you think about this in context, we have to ask ourselves the question, are we breaking through? 121 emails a day, a day, forget in a week or a year. Now your buyers are consumers, just like us, and we're all inundated not only by email, but by things like Slack. We check email or things like Slack or Yammer or any instant messenger 40 times every day. That's once every seven and a half minutes. We switch between tasks 300 times per day. We use 56 different apps, 56 different websites. You might go from Outlook to Salesforce to Basecamp to Tinder. I'm not judging, I'm just saying. We're constantly switching back and forth. She's like, yes, I'm on Tinder right now. And we're always using our phones. In fact, we're checking it 150 times a day. That means in the time that I have been talking, which, uh, hold on, I've been recording, for six minutes and 42 seconds, likely all of you have glanced down at your phone once, which is fine. But if you think about it, oh my god, this is an influx of information that is completely overwhelming. 